Hello reformers and welcome back to A Clash of Kings 4.1. Now we have arrived in Myrrh, well we did that in the previous episode of course, and I am now selling a couple of the bolts that we acquired here. Now, otherwise I am purchasing a couple of shields, because that is the main thing that we kind of have to worry about at the moment. The fact that our companions really don't have any way to, well, basically prevent being damaged. I mean, that's the main thing that we have to be a bit worried about. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be increasing Linaria's weapon master skill because as you can see, she's actually an incredible archer. And it would be pretty cool if we could try and capitalize upon that. Maybe she can be like a partner in crime for us as, as well as obviously Fenner helping us out a huge amount. So yeah, let's just continue improving Alan's strength as you can see, he's actually going to be a pretty beastly unit eventually. And we do need to get him a horse and all that sort of thing. But he has six weapon master and four in riding. And we just need to get him some of the you know extra combat skills and things like that for him to be a force to be reckoned with. Otherwise, I think we're I think we're pretty I think we're pretty decent. Anyway, we just need to I'm going to give Martin a shield. I'm going to give him the better one, and he's using an arming sword already, the arming sword that I'm using, hilariously enough. So yeah, he's actually going to be doing quite a lot of damage as a result, so that's nice. And Fenner already has a shield. Maron doesn't even have a weapon, so I suppose what I should do is I should give him my rusty sword, and I don't know whether I should give him this or not, because he's not very good. You know? <laughs> he's not very good at fighting, so maybe I should give it to Alan instead? He's using an arming sword, so I guess I'll, I'll give it to him instead and we'll see where that goes. Now, I would like to try and take on a couple of bandits in the area. So, I'm going to try and search around a little bit. Yes, I know the pirate group that we highlighted at the end of the previous episode, they disappeared because I needed to restore ourselves. My HP was very, very low. My companions are still recuperating in actual fact. So, yes, hopefully we'll be able to find... A group worthy of our attention. Uh, it's going to be easier than we think, I suppose, because there are many, many very strong parties in the area, at least strong in comparison to what I'm currently fielding. So what I'm thinking of doing is I'm going to go to the various towns of the... Oh, I keep forgetting... Volantis, that's it, of the Volantines. And we're going to try and see if we can find some mercenaries in their taverns, because there's a bunch of different towns here, and we're bound to have some luck, right? Valentine Spearman. Really? Just a Valentine Spearman? Okay, fine. Why not? Let's just let's just take them. Seems like we're having a an entire party full of I don't know, full of rejects and things like that. <laughs> it's rather amusing. Okay, well, yes, I actually wanted to fight those escaped slaves, but unfortunately it seems like one of the, or two of the vassals actually got there before me, so... Oh look, there's Alan's namesake, Alan the Bard. Yeah, it seems like there's no one else in here either. By the way, recruiting freelancers... Didn't we look at that in the previous episode? I, I'm not actually sure, but... Yes, anyway, recruiting freelancers requires 200 renown, so we won't be able to do that anytime soon. But hopefully we'll find a couple of... Oh uh, yes, thank you very much, yes. Hopefully we'll be able to find a couple of mercenaries in here, or maybe just some regular units. Uh, Bard, uh, Mavros. Yeah, I could technically get Mavros now, I think. I think he is reasonably well-priced, but I could be wrong about that. Yeah, I don't... Okay, uh, yeah. No, uh, do I want to get it? No, I don't really want to get him. I would like to get someone that has a pretty decent shield, but I haven't seen anyone like that so far, with the exception of Fenner. She's literally the only companion that has come with a shield, hilariously enough, as far as I'm aware at least. Anyway, I am probably just going to look around a little bit. There are so many Dothraki camps here that I'm very, very worried about coming across a large band of them, because they're going to be extremely fast, and we don't have that much pathfinding skill. There's an escaped slave's hideout. Maybe I'm just going to wait here for a little bit and see if I can find some escaped slaves. Alright, so as you can see here, we have been engaged upon by a fellow that doesn't know how to do his laundry. As you can see, he's already got blood stains on his armor. Is that intimidating? I don't know. 
It is a little bit, I think. <laughs> yeah, this is probably going to be pretty bad for us. Although, we do now have a little bit better gear than we used to for some of our units. So hopefully that's going to have us in good stead. But I'm very, very worried about dealing with these cell swords, Even though we were able to defeat them beforehand, I think that might have been luck for the most part. I think it might have been luck in the previous episode, so let's just see whether that is indeed the case. And we're going to try and, well, ugh, I, I don't know. I'm a bit, hmm, I'm quite worried about this, to be honest. I mean, they're going to have the height advantage. I mean, I, I don't even know why I'm going over here, to be honest. I mean, I should kind of should have just stayed back. But here's the thing, I really did not want them to have the range on us. And come on, yes, yeah, stab him. Yeah, there we go, that's what you get. That is what you get, Cell Sword Crossbowman. Thank you very much. Okay, so I'm just going to tell everyone else to charge in here. Hopefully, I'm going to be able to distract the enemy for the most part. Sathos, you are you are very, very useless, unfortunately. Gurnia, you're also kind of useless. I'm, I'm actually a bit sad that they're so useless at times because I really wish that we were much, much better in terms of our army being good, but... It's just not. It's just not. The reality of things is that we are just not particularly good at the moment. But that is going to change. That is going to change with time. We are hopefully going to do a pretty decent job at slaughtering this fellow. Or, or his friend, either way. Oh no! We're dying! Come on, get, get him! Yes! Oh, there's so many crossbowmen. They have literal so many crossbowmen right now. That is not good. That is not good for us. Oh no! Come on, come on! Let's, let's see if we can... Close the gap a little bit and see if we can do some slashing and some thrusting and some wonderful, wonderful damages. It's actually working pretty nicely, hilariously enough. Okay, yes, you can, you can, you can damage my shield. I don't mind. Just don't destroy it, please. I would appreciate it if you wouldn't destroy my shield. Oh yeah, there we go. I got close to him. Now, now this is game over for him. Thank you very much. Yes, and now this one is going to get a nice thrust in the chest. And hopefully dead. Yes, there we go. Oh, we're, we're almost dead, you know, because literally if I, if I lose my shield and get shot by one of these guys, I'm probably going to die very, very quickly. All right. How are we doing? How do you think we're going to do here? Do you think we're going to win this? I don't know, actually. It doesn't look good so far, actually. I've got to say that. Okay. Oh, we did it. <laughs> We actually did it. Two, oh, two allies remain, hilariously enough. Who is it? Who are you? Who is that fellow? I think that is literally a random unit that isn't even a companion. Yep, yep, it's a Stormlander Longbowman. That was the greatest choice I ever made to, re to recruit these guys in that tavern. Ah, oh, hilarious. Okay, so yes, every single battle is an absolute... I don't even know. It's it's a battle that hangs on a thread, and that thread can literally be cut by the scissors of fate. Ah, dr dr drama. Yes, very dramatic. Yeah, that's how good I am. I said drama. Hmm. <laughs> ah, terrible. Yes, I know. Anyway, I did get a crossbow, but this crossbow is awful. It is it is literal awfulness. Twenty one piercing damage. It can be used on a horse, but again, I do not have a horse, so not particularly necessary, is it? Oh, well, never mind. Okay, so we did lose a couple of our units, actually. A couple of the good ones. And we did get some torso armor, so I suppose that torso armor would be relatively decent to give to one of our companions, but I don't know which one really needs it. I suppose, I don't know, Alan, I guess? Do you need it? Yeah, you. Yeah, I guess, among other people, I mean, yeah, I mean, a bunch of them do need much better armor. Anyway, ooh, nice, a veteran, a veteran Stormlander Longbowman, that's what we like to see. All right, so I'm going to wait here for some time once again, and I'm going to try and find a more suitable bandit party. Well, I've done my best in, uh, shall we say, mending our forces. I, I just... I'm really, really impatient when it comes to waiting for wound treatment, so I think when next Sathos levels up, I'm going to be giving him much more in wound treatment, and hopefully that will help us to reduce my, uh, you know, that feeling. 
whatever that feeling may be. Anyway, as you can see, we're actually hunting down these cell sword marauders. I never thought I'd see the day when these guys are running away from us. Not entirely sure what's gotten into them because they do outnumber us, but maybe they've heard. Maybe they've heard that we can kill a party much, much larger than ourselves. Anyway, as you can see here, I have now leveled up to seven and I am actually unsure what to do because we have a pretty decent agility level at the moment and we do need to think about other skills but I'm wanting to be as effective as I can be in combat and at the moment our wages are so low that leadership is really not going to make too much difference and also I barely have enough well you know I barely have enough units to fill out my army as it is so it's not really necessary for me to do leadership just yet so I think I'm gonna go for another bit in agility and I think I'm actually going to go for another point in shield. That seems to have helped us quite a lot to do a little bit extra damage. I mean, you know, because it actually helps us to survive longer. So, you know, in theory, having a good shield and keeping yourself alive is more important than, you know, other things. Oh my. Okay, this is... Okay. that Okay, that's fine. Phew. <laughs> Did you see that? Did you see what was going to happen? Oh yeah, I think you did. Yeah. There was another cell sword crossbowman, spearman party over to the left. And I thought to myself, oh no, they're going to gang up on me. And that would have been an absolute travesty. Literally, we would have lost that almost instantly because they would have had just so many units and we wouldn't have been able to deal with them. So really happy that we were able to avoid that problem as you can see however it seems like most of our companions the main reason why they're gonna die is because they don't have shields so it seems to me like our first priority or the main priority that we have to think about right here is trying to find some cheap shields that they can use just to absorb some of the ranged damage that we're currently receiving because if we, you know, if we actually block ourselves from getting any of that damage incoming, then it's much more likely we will survive and do even more damage as a result. That's exactly what I was just talking about. You know, I was talking about having much more survivability, having a shield that helps you out and actually prevents you from dying. Although that doesn't actually seem to be helping Fenner or Martin at the moment. This is very perplexing to me. I've got to say that I'm really, really surprised that... All of my units are being killed right now. How are they being killed so heavily? Very strange. That is very, very strange. Thankfully, I'm able to deal a lot of damage right here, and I'm able to kill most of them. Okay, come on. Yes. Do you think I can actually do this? If I'm able to do this by myself, I will literally, I don't even know, jump out of my chair and run down the street. Yeah, I'm probably not going to do that because it's actually quite late at the moment, so... Don't really want to go outside in the dark. That would not be very nice. But anyway, come on now. Let's let's see if I can... Yeah, there we go. There we go. Okay. <laughs> this is hilarious. If I'm able to actually get close enough to the crossbowman here... I mean, I do have an, a massive amount of athletics. So technically, this is going to work out. Oh, look at that. I actually did get close to them. Now that's amazing. That is hilarious. Okay. Are you, are you serious? Are you seriously going to allow me to kill you? Oh, come on now. Come on now. There's no way. There is l a, a literal no way that I will that I will do this. Really? Are you really that bad? Wow, these, these guys are really that bad, apparently. I am very surprised that all of our companions have such a difficult time with them. It seems like we are literally just... We're just... We're the duelist. That's exactly what I wanted to become. We are the duelist. We are a legendary wandering duelist that apparently has amnesia and has lost all of his powers and is slowly regaining his memory. And that's what we call leveling up, kids. Yes. <laughs> that's what level ups are. That's what level ups are for this version of Elias Mormont, at least. Hello, Lanaria. You died. I'm very sorry. Well, technically, you got knocked unconscious. But anyway. Wow. That was hilarious. I killed 14. And literally only Fenner was able to get a kill. I'm gobsmacked, literally. Okay, well, we do have a nice shield here. Should I use that? Should I actually use that shield? It seems pretty decent. I mean, the size is amazing, but the HP, not so much. The resistance is pretty decent. Okay, I'm going to use it because we're not going to be using a horse anytime soon. I suppose that's a pretty decent thing. I, I don't know, actually, whether that shield's better or worse than what I had, but... 
I kind of need another shield for someone else, so I'm going to be giving a shield to Maron now. Or Moron. <laughs> uh, I'm sure he really appreciates me calling him Moron. Doesn't he? Yes. I'm sure he does. Anyway, does he have better boots? No, we're going to give him some better boots. There we go. Wow, these guys, really. They, they really need to level up and gain more skills and all kinds of things. Okay, I'm going to give them a little bit more. Ooh, Gurnir is absolutely amazing at combat. Look at him. He's actually got six in Iron Flesh. I can't believe it. He's got six in Iron Flesh, but he's level three. I, that's amazing. That is really, really quite good. Anyway, hopefully he'll be able to grow into that Iron Flesh, and he'll be able to become a force to be reckoned with before long. Anyway, there's another Sellsword Marauder party patrolling around Sellsword Marauder spawn point. Hmm, that's very atmospheric. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Yeah, I know that there are certain things that happen like that, you know, certain bugs and things like that. Anyway, I'm going to be improving my shield skill once more. And I'm going to be going for some more crossbows. I want to be ready for when we are able to acquire a rather wonderful crossbow. These guys are really fast. I need to be a bit careful of that when we get injured because that means that we won't have any pathfinding. I have two pathfinding. That is just atrocious. It really is absolutely awful. Anyway, that will be it for this episode. Next time we're going to be fighting even more bandits. Maybe we'll try and find a bigger party than us and maybe try and get a big renown reward. I thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.